Boom! Yeah! Oh, we both died! Well, that sucks. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Phoenix, the space themed shooter released in 1980. It was a, one of the very early video games that were out there. Um, it's funny to specify space themed because I feel like pretty much every shooter in the 80s was space themed. Uh, I think that comes from a combination of space was just in, you know, like everyone was reeling from Star Wars and Star Trek and like space seemed really awesome and cool. I mean, it still is cool. Um, but I also think that uh, computationally, it's cheaper and easier to make video games on low powered hardware when most of the screen can remain black and you don't have to draw any pixels. So I think there was a very functional reason uh, to have a lot of space themed video games in the 80s. Anyway, as you can see, this game is actually quite advanced. We're going to be fighting birds and stuff. Look at this. this. This is actually one of the first instances of a boss in video games, if you can believe it. In fact, this, this game had a boss level before the term boss was coined. So I don't even know what people called this. It was like, you know, the it was just another stage in their mind. But this is a boss fight, and people didn't even have the concept, didn't even have the language to describe what boss fights were. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, let's slam in a few quarters here and uh, get her going. So we're going to be fighting birds in space. What are birds doing in space? I don't know, really. And frankly, I don't give a damn. They told me to kill birds, and I'm that's what I'm doing. I, I died, though. Uh, right off the bat. So a pretty simple game. You move left and right. You shoot at you shoot at birds and stuff, Space Invaders style. Oh my god, these things move so erratically. Oh my god, they're attacking me. These birds are no joke. Okay, we have a second button that activates a shield. So oh god, the shield takes time to regenerate, but if you use it at the right time, oh god, yeah. All right, I did. I used it strategically. I did a game thing. I'm so used to uh, when I go to uh, play video games for you guys, like screw screwing things up. So it's nice to actually do it correctly. Oh yeah, I like this shield mechanic. This is actually pretty cool. Oh god, look how fast they're coming! In the second level here, the game does allow you to shoot faster. So you can see I have more of a rapid shot here. Um, now this game, uh, this game was really popular in the in the arcades back in the day. Interestingly. The company that put it out in North America did not did not actually make it. This game is actually a Japanese game from a really small developer. I've forgotten the name of them, but it's like Amstar or something like that. Oh god, look, they've, they've hatched into full-grown birds. What are these things? What are these weird, crazy space birds? Oh my god. Die! Oh, I can't hit this thing. Okay, we have to get, we have to like aim here. Jeez, oh, I went to use the shield, but that was a moment too late. Game over, no! Level five is where you encounter the boss. I want to try and get there at least once, so we'll, we'll play through these early levels a few times here. Um, yes, uh, so this game was originally a Japanese game called Centuri, and it was uh, licensed, you know, and appropriately uh, by, a, by an American company and released as Phoenix in the States. So it's kind of interesting. I think it's a little more well-known. Well, at least in the States is Phoenix. I don't know about Japan. I don't want to speak for them. Maybe they know this game is Centuri. But uh, yeah, it's interesting that the people who made this game kind of fell into obscurity. Like I've never heard of another game by the creators of this. And this is actually like, you know, for the 80s. This is like a fairly, fairly sophisticated shooter game here. God. The, I guess these things are like bats. We don't get to the birds till level three. And I guess these are their eggs. So it's like we're just trying to like destroy their eggs before they fully hatch. Because when they hatch, they are terrifying. Oh, I just wasted my shield. That is not good. Okay, I'm shooting like crazy. Why does my ship... Oh, I think I shot his wing off. Oh, I shot both of his wings off. Why does my ship lose the power... Lose the ability to have rapid fire? Um... Like, between levels. Like, why only on level two do you have rapid fire? It's a little odd. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. They start to... They, they definitely have the Space Invaders thing where they move faster. Um, as fewer of them are on the screen. I feel like that Space Invaders... That was like a bug in the code. Oh, we made it to the boss. Yes. Um, in Space Invaders, it was like a bug. 
uh, that the that the invaders got faster as fewer of them were on the screen. Because basically, as fewer enemies were on the screen, the game's code didn't have to compute movements for as many objects on the screen, and so it started to uh, uh, move the remaining objects, the remaining enemies, faster. So it was a bit of a bug, but it actually became like one of the most iconic sort of gameplay mechanics. Ah, oh, damn it! Of Space Invaders, you know, the fact that, oh my god, enemies sped up. No, game over, we didn't destroy the alien ship. We'll keep going here. Um, and so I think later games, they intentionally added that mechanic where enemies would speed up as there's fewer of them on the screen because it's a great idea for a mechanic, you know? Like, the game has a natural sort of increase in tension. Come on, fly my shield. Oh no, that totally didn't work. There's one bat that's just hanging around at the bottom of the screen. Oh my god. I'm having a lot of trouble on this first level. These things are all over the place. I don't know how to tell if my shield is regenerated. Okay, I guess it has. But then, is there any indicator on the screen? Oh, I can just press it again. Interesting. Maybe just waste score or something like that when I use it? I don't 100% know. Um, this is my favorite level because you get the rapid fire. Boom, 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 boom. Nice try. Oh, what the hell? My shield was up. Maybe it died at just the right time, or he just had enough moxie to make it through my shield. This guy's going nuts. That's that's the space bat that's on crack cocaine, man. He's going he's going crazy or meth. That's just that's the speedballing alien. Oh god. Look at look at them all. How am I gonna be able to defeat this many space birds? Oh god, they're coming for me. Shields! Shields to maximum! Okay, here we go, here we go. There's only two left. One left. Zero! I crushed it. Alright, I need some extra lives here, though. If I'm gonna have any chance of defeating the uh, UFO space boss... Oh, God! Ah, oh, I pressed the shield button. A second too late. A second too late. So, where are you guys who are watching this right now? So, I, I've said this before, but, like, arcades were, like, just a little before my time, you know? Like, I was born in the in the 80s, so it's, like, back when this back when teenagers were playing this game, like, I was still just a little kid, so I wasn't in arcades playing this. Oh, God. You know, like, Super Mario 1 is uh, where I really came on the gaming scene. I mean, I played my dad's Atari back in the day, and I, I liked arcades. It's just I was, you know, like, like teenagers would go to arcades and hang out in arcades. I, I wasn't a teenager. So were any of you guys back in the 80s who are watching this now, were you guys teenagers in the 80s? And did you basically, oh God, okay, that did nothing. Uh, what, what was it like basically in, in arcades playing this game or other games like this? Um, I'm very curious because I feel like, you know, the, oh, we blew up the boss, we did it. Boom. Oh, we get some Bach. Interesting. Um, I feel like arcades in the 80s were basically like teenager hangout spots, and there's really not an equivalent these days. And even in the 90s and stuff in my day, like there really wasn't an equivalent. Um, you know, like I, I don't know where kids go these days to hang out, but like I imagine back in the day, like, oh God, oh God, get away from me. Kids would all just go to the arcade uh, and you'd like see all sorts of, it's, it's kind of like a kid's bar. You know, it's like people are hanging out and like having conversations and like, you know, girls come in. I mean, I don't know, may maybe like none of this is true and arcades are really depressing, quiet places and like no girls ever came and stuff, you know, but I imagine them to be like cool hangout spots. So I'm kind of curious, like, like what were, what were arcades actually like from people who were there? I also know, if, uh, I cannot get this guy, by the way. Oh, you son of a beach. Can't believe that. Um, oh, and then we just get him right away. I also know that uh, back in the 80s, or from what I've heard, um, arcades and arcade machines were believed to attract hooligans. So I know that like older people, like, you know, people who were in their 40s and 50s, you know, in the 80s, didn't always necessarily look fondly on arcade machines or like teenagers. I feel like no matter what generation we're talking about, the older generation always hates teenagers. I feel like that is like, it's without fail. Without fail, when everyone's a teenager, they're like, man, older people suck, they're so mean to me. And then people become old and they're like, man, teenagers suck. You know, like people are, people always hate teenagers. I don't know what it is. 
I uh, I try not to hate teenagers because I've kind of thought about the fact that older people always hate teenagers. I'm like, why are we always so down on teenagers? We were all teenagers. We were all stupid at one point. But, like, we weren't even... I think older people, like, look back at teenagers and they look more stupid than they are. Like, I don't think teenagers are as stupid as, uh, you know, people... People give them credit, not credit, but uh, the opposite of credit, you know. Anyway, we're on some kind of like generational rant here. Um, if you grew up in the arcades as a teenager, let me know. I'm very curious. Very curious what that whole scene is like. Um, another interesting thing about this game, and this isn't unique to this game, is that... So the original game for this was Centuri. Then it was licensed properly to become Phoenix here. Um, but there were a number of bootlegs of this game out in arcades. So if you're not familiar with bootlegs, how that worked in the 80s, is literally another company would just come and steal the code off of an arcade game, and they would release the exact same game. They would just, like, change the name. Um, so I think we encountered this way back when we played Moon Patrol, because there was bootlegs called, like, Ranger or something like that, or Ranger X. It was the exact same game. It's just They just changed the title screen. Um, this game had bootlegs, too. Like, it's such a, su such a crazy idea. Like, imagine that Nintendo releases, you know, Mario Maker 3, and then Sega just goes ahead and literally steals Mario Maker 3 and just changes the name to, like, Plumber Guy and releases it, you know? And, like, doesn't even change the graphics or anything. That's what these bootlegs were. It was, like, very obvious rip-offs. Um, but somehow they were allowed. That is part of gaming history that I don't fully understand. Like, how was that allowed? Um... Ah, these damn pink birds. Oh, we got a whole bunch of them. If we can just get one more, then we're in a good position. God, oh, I panicked with the shields. I thought they were going to come down. Apparently, there is a bug where if you shoot three birds really rapidly, it will, like, hard set your score to, like, 200,000 or something like that. Ah, we died. Okay, one more shot to get to the boss here. I do actually want to check out this game on the Atari 2600 as well. We're playing the, the original arcade version, but there was a 2600 port, and it's always interesting to see what people on the home consoles were playing when people in the arcades were playing this. Because arcades actually, like, you know, I mean, it was the 80s, so, like, you know, they, they had hardware limitations, of course. But, I mean, looking at the graphics and stuff, this isn't that bad. I mean, it's it's simple, but I mean, look at the, especially the backgrounds, like the space backgrounds and stuff. Like that's that's reasonable-ish. Doesn't strike me as particularly like difficult to look at. I mean, when we go to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, you'll see graphics got way more primitive as you got to weaker hardware in the eighties. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see the distinction. But yeah, arcade hardware. I think a lot of old arcade games hold up actually fairly well in the the graphics department. And I think it's b partly because I think there's something a little timeless about, uh, you know, pixel art graphics, uh, about sprites and stuff like that. So I like, I look at these kind of sprites and I'm like, yeah, these are, these are passable. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I don't know. What's your standard? What What's your standard for like passable old school graphics? Do these hold up or do you look at these and you're just like, ugh, gross. You know, like, like you want, you want 3D polygons and like 3.2 million colors, like assaulting your eyes all at once. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Well, we've tried, uh, we've tried Phoenix slash Centuri on the arcades. I like how they're writing it out. They're writing Phoenix out with birds and then a, a space bird hatches. They still haven't explained to me why there are these birds in space and why they are our mortal enemies. Anyway, we beat, we beat the boss once. Let's pop over to the Atari 2600 and see what that one is like. All right, here we are with Phoenix. Uh, as you can see, things have been simplified uh, a little bit here on uh, the Atari. But uh, we still have the shield, we still have the shooting, we still have the space bird. It looks like the same game to me. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, give it a shot here. All right. We got music, too, which I don't think we had in the other version here. It's actually a little harder. The interesting thing about this game is it's very Space Invaders-like, where you can only move left and right, but you can't move up and down. I really want to try and move up and down, but it's just not in the cards. I think in Galaxian, maybe you could move up and down. 
I don't know. In some of the other, like, more modern uh, shooters that followed after this, you were allowed to move up and down. Actually, maybe this is easier. Do we have rapid fire here? Kind of. Oh, the birds, the birds are just fully hatched. They're fully formed. They don't go through an egg phase. They're just full-on space birds. It is interesting how you have to shoot the space birds right... Damn it. Right in the, uh... You know, right in the center like it, it like just winging them doesn't doesn't count um oh god I, you know what i just realized an atari only has one button how the hell do you use the shields oh you press down okay there we go we've we figured that out damn it um th the interesting thing about the atari is i'm pretty sure the system could have handled more than one button but when they designed the Atari 2600, I don't know, they were just like, no game needs more than one button. And they were like, that's that, you know? Like, the Nintendo, the NES, I mean, a lot of people think of it as having two buttons, and it was like the main system that followed after the Atari. But it really had four. Because you had not just A and B, but you had start and select, right? And start and select, um... They were often used in video games, like more complex games, to access menus and inventories and stuff. So like having only one game, ah, oh, we, we didn't make it, the alien got us. Having only one button is actually quite a handicap. I mean, I guess they make up for it by, you know, you press down, up and down are loose buttons uh, in this game, but still. Um, I think having a D-pad and at least four buttons is what you need for, for like a game of any sophistication. Which is why a lot of these early Atari games are, are quite basic, but... You know, I mean, but I, put it in context. You know, like, imagine, you know, like, you've never seen a video game before, and you can find, you can play this at home. Like, th th this is this is awesome. You know, like, if, 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 you know, nobody had Nintendos, Super Nintendos, Xboxes, those things didn't exist. You know, you're, just, you're in the arcades playing this with your friends. You're like, man, it'd be so cool to be able to, like, play this at home... And like, just you know, hang out with you, you like you're your friend, and like you know, have a coke, you know, in the comfort of your own home, and uh, and play some play some Phoenix, and you got your wish, man. So it's like, I think with a lot of these old Atari games, it's like, yeah, you got to use your imagination a little bit for the graphics, but they really do capture the like gameplay, uh, at least at least to to some degree of the arcade games, and. You know, that's, I mean, that's what you want. You know, I'd want, I would much rather take a game that plays like an arc, the arcade game that I want it to, but doesn't look as nice than a game that looks as nice, but really does not play as well. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, my brain will fill in the gaps with, uh, with, uh, you know, the imagination. But, oh god, oh god. So we gotta, we gotta kill this alien in the center, obviously. And the only way to do that is to shoot through this, like, rotating thing. Damn it. Oh, I, 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 he's dead, actually. Boom! Yeah! Oh, we both died! We both died. It was a murder-suicide. Oh, there we go. We passed the game. So I, I'm actually pretty happy that I have been able to at least beat the boss a couple of times. Okay, can we shoot faster here? It does not feel like it. I wish that this game had... I wish that on the second level, um, like in the arcades, you got rapid fire. I wish that was like a power-up you could pick up and like carry on for the other levels because I feel like that would be far more interesting to me than just having one level that like arbitrarily you can shoot fast. Damn it. Um, and I guess, you know, like all, like all early arcade games and stuff, like there's really only a couple of stages after you beat the boss... You're just going to loop around. We can mess with the difficulty. I think this does something. I don't know. I, 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 it's very hard for me to navigate Atari menus because basically there is none. So on like a, you know, video game, like, I don't know, like, like any, any more modern video game, there'd be like an options menu. Even on like the NES and Super Nintendo, there would be these options and you would select easy or hard, you know, but on an Atari, you just have, you basically have dip switches. Like on the side of the machine, you just flick you flick them, and you hope they do something. But it's like there's usually very little graphical indication that something has happened. Um, I mean, very few Atari games even show words. You know, like like this game is showing numbers, but like where we haven't seen like a single word. Maybe they showed Phoenix. Maybe Phoenix was the thing. Um, like the main title of the game, but that's it. 
when you flick around the difficulty switches, it doesn't say like like hard mode, easy mode, invisible mode, stuff like that, you know? All right. So I wonder if you get extra points from shooting off the wings of these birds or it's just totally a waste of time. Boom, boom, oh, we're, we're doing good. Come get some, oh, I went to activate the shields, I was too cocky. You one-winged bastard. Ba oh my god. Okay, I thought we were gonna beat the boss one more time, but it is looking like that ain't happening. Die! Oh, I got his wing. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm just going to use all my gaming might here. Oh, we got this. Yeah, get out of there. Oh, God. Oh, we got this. We got this, I think. No, we don't got this. We got this. Oh, my God. Ah, that's hard. That's hard. Let's see if the, oh, the computer just did it. I like how the computer carries on after you die. It's like, oh, you died on this level? Well, let me show you how to beat it, you sissy. So, anyway. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, like, this is the Atari 2600. I mean, I guess this is a short video today uh, for us, but I feel like uh, we've kind of tapped out Phoenix here. Um, this is another interesting thing, actually. If you if you grew up in the 80s, you know, you're like a teenager, you're going to arcades, maybe your family owned an Atari 2600. Like, okay, honestly, for us, we played this game for like 20 minutes and we're kind of like, well, that's, that's Phoenix, we're kind of done with it. But I'm kind of curious, like, for anyone who owned this game on the Atari 2600 back in the day, like, would you sit here and play this for hours and hours, you know? Like, would, would your friends and, like, would you and your dad, you know, be taking turns and stuff? Like, like how long would a game like this hold your interest? Um, again, I know it's a different era, so, you know, no judgment for, like, if this game, like, really, really pulled you in. Uh, even though, like, nowadays, like, after, like, 20 minutes or so, you're kind of like, yeah, all right, well, it's Phoenix. You know, we saw it. So, yeah. Give us some historical context, folks. Anyone out there who, who can offer some. It's always interesting to, like, not only try these old games, but sort of, like, hear what the games were like, you know? Because, like, we can, like, we'll forever be able to play Phoenix. But we're not always, like, people of the future are not always going to be able to appreciate what it was like to play Phoenix in the 80s. We can play it in modern times, but... I mean, like, you know, the con the gaming context is just so different nowadays. There's, like, there's, like, so many video games out there that, honestly, no one can play them all. Like, I, I, I can tell you guys, I've been trying to play, like, a thousand video games uh, from the, basically, the late 70s up to the 2010s. And not only have I not finished the thousand games I wanted to play uh, from the book, but there are literally thousands more that didn't make it into the book that I could be playing as well. So it's like, if you tried to play all the games that exist now, like I'm not even including 2010 to 2020, right? Imagine I included that. Like there's there's just so many games. A kid born nowadays is going to have more video games to play in their lifetime than they can probably ever get to. Like it's just crazy. Anyway, we made it to the boss one more time. So before I actually sign off, let's see if I have it in me to uh, actually take this bastard down. You bird breeding space bastard. I'm going to take you down. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to end on a high note today, guys. You guys didn't see that. I didn't just die. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think of Phoenix here? Is it a game that you played back in the day? Is it a game that you enjoyed and loved? If you did grow up playing this game, I'd love to hear about what it was like to actually play this game back in the day. And, and like, was it a good game? Or was it a game that you were sort of meh about, you know? Just just give us give us your perspective and your memories. I'd love to hear that in the comments. Um, as always, guys, whatever you think of the game today, hopefully I made it entertaining for you. You learned a little something. If that is true, don't forget to like the video and all that stuff. Um, and until next time, you all take care of yourselves and watch out for space birds. Peace. Oh, yeah.